Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roman Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be integrating a Google Maps widget while creating the map page for this app. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app, and for this episode, I'll be covering the creation of the map page widget, integrating the Google Maps widget, as well as adding custom marker icons and additional custom widgets that replace marker info windows, all custom created in Flutter. This is what we're tackling in this video. The user clicks on the details page button that will launch the map page widget. The Google map page shows with a few elements overlaid on top of it, as well as using custom marker pins to match my design theme. Let's start right away by bringing in some of the assets that will be used in this tutorial. So I'll use some images for the pins. I may change them later on in upcoming tutorials. First, add the packages we'll use in this project in the popspec.yaml. I'm using the Google Maps Flutter package. As of the creation of this video, this is the latest version of this package. Add the iOS specific configuration to make it work. Edit the app delegate.swift to add the Google Maps import as well as providing the Google Maps API key. Replace it with your own. In the info p list file, add the required location specific permissions to it. We're done with the iOS portion. Now let's do the Android specific configuration. Navigate to the Android manifest file and add the location specific permissions as well as the entry for the Google Maps API key. Replace it with your own. If you haven't obtained a Google Maps API key, you can do so via the Google Cloud Platform Console. With your account, navigate to API and Services, Dashboard, or you can go straight to Credentials and grab your Maps API key. Make sure these services are enabled for you before moving forward. Check some of the links in the description on how to enable those. We're ready to start. Let's create a page widget called mappage.dart. Create it as a stateful widget as we'll maintain state within this widget. As usual, I'll add a text widget to test that things are in place. I'll do the plumbing right away for the details page location button to launch this page by using the navigator.push provision. Navigate to the details page, click on the location button. Yikes. Okay, it works, so let's move on. Well, at least I'll add a scaffold around it, which I'll need anyway down the line. Ah, much better. As in the previous tutorials, I'll replace the home page of my base material app so I can land on this page while in development. With my Google Map dependencies in place, let's start adding the dependencies for the Google Map widget. Create a Google Map controller, which controls a single instance of a Google Map and import the package. We need custom marker icons, so I'll need two bitmap descriptor, which will represent custom marker PNGs coming from my assets for source and destination markers. I need to hold on to the list of markers somewhere, so I'll add a set collection of marker references. Add a current location and destination location type of lat long, which will hold some hard-coded coordinates for this example. Later, I'll show you how to grab the current location from the user's device. Overwrite the init state since we'll do some initialization up front, such as the initial locations as well as the custom marker pin icons. Create a method called setInitialLocation and instantiate the current location reference with the hard coded coordinates from my source location constant. Do the same for the destination location reference. Invoke the method and leave it ready. Proceed to set up the source and destination marker icons by creating a method called setSource and destination marker icons. Since using the from asset image method from the bitmap descriptor is an asynchronous call, use a sync and await for it. Provide the correct path for the image assets. Invoke the method and leave it in place. Add a few more constants required by the Google map around the camera zoom, tilt, and bearing. You can modify this as you please. I find these values work for me every time. I know you're anxious to see something. We'll get there. Add a camera position instance to feed it to the map. Otherwise, it won't render correctly when we show it. Pass the zoom, tilt, and bearing accordingly, as well as the target, which I'll use source location for. Okay, here we go. Add the Google Map widget and enable my location option, which we'll use later, and disable a few others for aesthetic purposes. Add the markers collection reference to it for when we're ready to add the markers. Set the type of map to normal for our case. 
And here's where I'll use the initial camera position created above. Handle the on map created event and associate the provided controller with a local controller. Boom, and we're done. Not really, we have a few more things to do. Let's start showing the custom pins on the map. I'll take care of that once the map completes loading and rendering, so I'll create a method called show pins on map. All this method will do is create two marker references and add them to the markers collection. Each marker instance will have a unique ID for reference, a position and an icon. All these references were instantiated earlier, so now we can make use of them when creating the source marker. Same thing for the destination marker. Since we want to trigger an update upon adding the markers, surround these inside a set state so it triggers a rebuild. Instead of the out of the box markers, we got custom markers. We'll use much cooler pins later, you'll see, but these will do the trick. If I want to overlay things on top of the map, I'll need to refactor this and move it inside a stack widget, that way the map is below and things can be overlaid on top of it. Make the map fill the stack by putting it inside a positioned fill widget. Now we're ready to place things over the map. Let's work on the user batch widget that goes at the top. Add another position widget wrapping a container widget. As a child, add a row as things will be laid out horizontally. We'll add a fixed container widget that will serve as the avatar image holder. Use a decoration image to set a background image to this container. Add a border radius and make it cover the container using box fit cover. Image shows, now add some space to the right of it using a sized box. The next element in the row will occupy most of the real estate in it, so use an expanded widget to make it stretch. Add a column widget as a child since we'll be laying down two text widgets for the labels. Add the appropriate styles for them. At the end of the row, add an icon widget. This will be a location pin icon. Add the color to match the design. My design makes this container look like a pill, so let's build it like that. Add a box decoration with a white background, some border radius for rounded corners, and apply some shadow for depth. Add padding and margin for spacing. Make the text align to the left of the image by applying cross-axis alignment start to the column widget. My design shows a border around the avatar image, so let's apply it. I think this custom widget is ready. As a best practice, extract this whole widget structure as its own widget and let's call it map user badge. We'll only use this widget in the map page for now, but it's still good practice to extract it as its own widget for encapsulation and better hierarchy when it comes to widget composition and why not rendering. Add it to its own file and fix the imports. Reimport it on the map page. You should see no difference. Nice. I'm ready for the next custom widget, which I'm calling the map bottom pill, which will replace the custom info window of a Google map and slide from the bottom of the page. That's why I'm using a position widget as the foundation. Add a container widget as the base with a column widget since this will have two rows. Each row surrounded by yet another container that will hold its own row since the items will look similar to that user badge we created earlier. How will we accomplish this category icon that looks a bit off to the bottom side of this image? Let's use a stack for it. The stack will hold the image first using a clip oval to clip it as a circle. We'll add some fixed dimensions to it to control the layout. Make the image cover the container. Now add the category icon widget we created earlier and see how it looks by default. See, that's why I said we need a stack. Now to make it look off to the side a bit, wrap it inside a position widget and adjust the bottom and right coordinates. Let's add some margin and padding to give it room to breathe. Add a background color, rounded edges with border radius and a shadow effect for depth. The stack clips the child widgets by default when they extend the stack dimensions. 
use the stack option clip behavior and set it to clip none. And there you go. I'll have to refactor the category icon so I can manipulate the padding it has, as opposed to having a fixed padding. So I'll add a padding property to it. By default, it will have the value it had before, but I want to supply my own padding from the outside. As in the user badge, add spacing between the image and the content using a sized box widget. Add a column widget to lay down the items vertically. I'll add two text labels to it with appropriate styles. Add an icon widget at the end. I want the middle content to stretch and occupy most of the real estate, so you know the drill. Wrap it inside an expanded widget. This whole container is the top row, so now let's tackle the bottom row. It'll pretty much be the same, so I'll skip ahead. Okay, I'm done with the map bottom pill. Let's extract it as its own widget as well, which I'll call map bottom pill. Cut it out of this file and add it to its own file in the widgets folder called map bottom pill dart and fix the imports. Reimport it on the map page. Nice. The only thing I may be missing from this design is the app bar widget, which, as you may remember, I made it explicitly show on top of things by adding it as the last widget in my stack. That way it shows on top of everything. Here, I'll do the same trick. And there it is. I'll have to refactor the main app bar so it doesn't show the avatar when I'm on this page, so I'll add a parameter to hide it, but I still want to persist its dimensions, so I'll use an opacity widget for now. When I'm pulling real data, I'm going to add a better implementation, but this works for the time being. The property show profile pick will either show it visible or invisible by modifying the opacity on it. And there it is. Only for this page, I'll hide the header avatar image. Now let's make things pop. I'll make it so that every time you tap anywhere on the map that's not the pin, it will slide the map bottom pill out of view and slide it back up when tapping on the destination pin. Let me add some constants to reflect the position coordinates we'll be altering here. Handle the ontap event from the Google Maps widget, which gives you a lat long property, which we may use later on. For now, we'll use this method to dismiss the map bottom pill. Okay, so how will we animate this bottom pill? Simply by renaming this position widget to animated position widget. There's a series of widgets available in Flutter that simplify the creation of animations and make it so straightforward. Rename it to animated position, add a duration and a curve, and add a property that will change when triggering a state change, and you'll see it come to life. In our case, we want to modify the bottom position of this widget along an ease-in-out curve for half a second. The animated position widget takes care of the rest. Add the property that will change upon triggering a state change, in my case it will be called pin pill position and add the property to the animated position widget that you want to affect, in our case, the bottom position. It will pull the widget from the bottom as this property changes value from positive to negative. On tapping on the map, trigger the state change by calling set state and flipping the value to a value that makes the container show off the screen. I'm calling it pin invisible position. Check it out. Now add the other part, which is bringing it back up. Reset the pin pill position to a value that shows it on the screen. I'm calling it pin visible position. Tap on the map, 
slide down. Tap on the pin, slide up. Nice and easy. I want to demonstrate another one of these useful out of the box animated widgets by animating the user badge widget we created earlier. Let's make it so its background color as well as the color of the label changes when tapping on its corresponding marker pin, shall we? For that, we'll use another similar useful widget, the animated container widget. Rename the container widget to animated container and supply a duration, half a second would do, as well as a curve. I'll stick with ease in and out and a flag that we'll use to keep track of the changes to whether this user badge is selected or not. We'll just call it that, is selected. Add the ternary logic for each corresponding property in this widget that we want to affect, in my case, the root container widget's background color and the labels. Back in the map page, upon tapping on the map, I'll change the user badge selected property to false to change it and trigger a widget rebuild to mark it as not selected and reset it. And also upon the user tapping on the source pin, I'll trigger the rebuild to mark it as selected and change the color. As you see, by using the animated positioned and animated container widget, I brought a bit of interactivity at a cheap cost. Back on my main dart page, I'll revert the changes and perform a full reload. Navigate to the details page and from there launch the map page. Nice, the map user badge widget works flawlessly as well as the map bottom pill widget. Easy and with a minimal amount of code. In the next video, we'll continue capitalizing on this Google Maps implementation by adding cooler looking marker pins, as well as implementing route polylines between the two markers to delimit the route, so make sure to tune in for that. And with that, see you on the next video. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated, and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.